Good morning, this is K. Devan Reddy, Assistant Professor in AAA Department, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this video, we are going to discuss about speed control methods of three-phase induction motor. So, we know the importance of the speed control. So, and we are uh, already aware of the speed control methods of DC machines. But uh, three-phase induction motors are uh, also having uh, speed control methods for controlling the speed of an induction motor. But it is done at the time at the cost of decrease in efficiency and also the low power electrical power factor. Generally, we have the expression for synchronous speed N s equal to 120 F by P. The speed of the induction motor is changed from both the stator as well as the rotor side. So, from the stator side, we will control the frequency as well as we will control the or we will change the number of poles that will change as here the speed of the rotating magnetic field. NS is directly proportional to the frequency and inversely proportional to the number of poles. So, for an induction motor, uh, the speed control is possible with the cost of decrease in efficiency as well as uh, the power factor is also reduced. The speed control of induction motor is changed from both the stator side as well as the rotor side. The, the stator side, this is only the possible way we have to control the speed. The rotor side also we have uh, some methods that is applicable only for slipping type of the induction motor, the speed control methods for rotor side. Whereas in the case of the squirrel gauge induction motor, the speed control methods for squirrel gauge induction motor onto the rotor side is not possible. The speed control of three phase induction motor from a stator side or further classified as the first method is V by F control or frequency control. Second one is a change the number of stator poles. Third one controlling the supply voltage. The fourth one adding rheostat in stator circuit. The speed control of three phase induction motor from rotor side are further classified as adding external resistance on a rotor side, cascade control method, injecting slip frequency of EMF into the rotor side. And these are the two ways, these are the two uh, ways we will control the speed of the induction motor from the stator side as well as the rotor side. We have for the stator side, we have four different methods to control the speed. And similarly, we have uh, three different ways to control the speed of the induction motor on the rotor side. The first one speed control from stator side, the first method is V by F control or frequency control of three phase induction motor. In a three phase induction motor, we will have the induced EMF e equation which is similar with the transformer which is equal to 4.44 times of pi into k into t into f or which will be a uh, flux equal to V by 4.44 times of KTF. So, in this V by F control method, so either we have to generally we will control the speed of the induction motor by controlling the voltage or controlling the frequency is possible. So, why we maintain, why we change both V by N F ratio constant that we will discuss in this uh, method. If not maintain the V by F ratio constant, what happened also we will discuss in this method. So, to maintain the constant flux, to maintain the constant flux, it is only possible if we change the voltage that is, if we decrease the frequency of flux, if we decrease the frequency, flux increases, but at the same time, if we decrease the voltage, flux will also decrease. So, if flux decreases causing no change in the flux, and hence it remains constant. That means, if you change only the voltage, that will not suitable. If you change only the voltage and only the frequency, it will not give you a good speed control method in case of V by F control method. Because if you change the frequency, the saturation effect will come into the picture in the stator and rotor circuits. So, if you maintain V by F ratio is constant, if you maintain a V by F ratio is constant, it will give you a good speed control method for uh, from a stator side that is V by F control method or a frequency control method. In this method, we have to uh, reduce the voltage and also to reduce the frequency. It has to be con uh, this has to be 
made equal means the ratio of v by f must be constant then only your main flux is constant if not done this if not done this for example if you change only the voltage or if you change only the frequency for example if you change the voltage you will have a relation flux is directly proportional to supply voltage and inversely proportional to frequency of the supply if you change only the voltage the flux is increases because it both are proportional to each other if flux increases the saturation effect will come into the picture that is a magnetic saturation of the state of circuit as well as the rotor circuit will come into the picture if you change only the frequency that is if you are increasing the frequency flux will reduces right so if you maintain this v by f ratio constant if you wanted to decrease the frequency in the same way you have to increase the voltage you have to decrease the voltage similarly if you want to increase the frequency you have to increase the voltage as well and finally the v by f ratio will maintain a constant that will be uh, equal to flux of the induction motor is constant so if flux of the induction motor is constant then v by f control method is uh, it will gives you a good results for speed control from state or side another method controlling the supply voltage we we, we know the relation for a torque torque is proportional to slip times of the induced emf in the rotor circuit so it is torque is proportional to torque is proportional to s times of the induced emf in the rotor square divided by r2 but this will be torque is proportional to slip times of the v square also we can write that is inversely proportional to the resistance that is divided by r2 we will write so e2 is directly proportional to v2 we will directly write the torque is proportional to slip times of the v square so the torque is very sensitive with the change in supply voltage torque is very sensitive with the change in supply voltage at the time of the starting slip becomes 1 torque is proportional to the square of the supply voltage under running condition the torque is directly proportional to slip times of the voltage at the supply side so from these expressions we will conclude that torque is very sensitive to the change in supply voltage so by changing the supply voltage we will effectively change the speed of the induction motor changing the number of stator poles the stator poles can be changed by the two methods one is multiple stator winding method pole amplitude modulation method so multiple stator winding in this method of speed control of three phase induction motor we provide two separate windings in the stator the multiple stator winding method we will maintain two separate windings in the case of the stator these two stator windings are electrically isolated from each other and are bound for different number of poles so use a switching arrangement at the time of the supply at a time using uh, by using this by using the switching arrangement at a time supply is given to one winding only and hence the speed control is possible so with the help of the multiple stator windings with the help of the switching arrangement we will design it for different number of poles the stator winding is designed for a different number of poles it will change the free, uh, speed of the induction motor so in this case the the finite speed control is possible and it is limited speed control is possible with the help of the multiple stator winding another method is pole amplitude modulation method in this method of speed control of three phase induction motor the original sinusoidal mmf wave is modulated by another sinusoidal mmf wave having a different number of poles so in this method also we will change the uh, we will say we will control the speed we will change the speed of the induction motor by the phase modulation that is pole amplitude modulation of induction motor so in this method of speed control the original sinusoidal mmf wave will be modulated with the help of the another sinusoidal mmf wave with, which having the different number of poles and third method is adding the rheostat that is adding the external resistance in a stator circuit it is also useful for controlling the speed of the induction motor in this method of speed control of this three phase induction motor by the external rheostats are connected in series with the stator winding it will reduces the voltage it will reduces the voltage at the supply side and the reduced voltage is applied to the stator windings So, and we have the relation torque is proportional to the square uh, slip times of the square of the supply voltage it is very sensitive to the torque the torque is very sensitive with the supply voltage 
if it decreases the supply voltage torque will also decrease as here in the case when you increase the resistance at the time of the starting or at a stator side with the help of the rheostat so the torque will also be decreases and but for supplying the same load the torque must be remains the constant and it is only possible if we increase the slip and if we, the slip will increases motor will run at reduced speed so in this method if you want to control the speed and if you want to maintain the constant uh, load if you maintain a constant load to supply that constant load or to satisfy the constant load demand of induction motor by increasing the slip so if you are increasing the slip means you have to reduce the speed that means if you are increase the slip means obviously the speed of the induction motor will be reduced speed control of induction motor on to the rotor side so by adding an external resistance on a rotor side this is very well known concept we have in a slip ring induction motor we have a provision on the rotor side called a slip rings and brush arrangement with the slip rings and brush arrangement we can add a resistance to the rotor circuit so we know the relation for torque as well as the rotor resistance torque is proportional to the slip and inversely proportional to the resistance under low slip region torque is directly proportional to the resistance and inversely proportional to the slip under high slip region in a three phase induction motor uh, we will divide the entire operation into low slip region and a high slip region in a low slip region we have a relation torque is proportional to the s and in a high slip region torque is inversely proportional to s this is at the time of the starting and this is at the time of the running condition so with the help of the resistors so if you are increasing the resistance in the rotor circuit from this expression the torque will reduce us so torque reduces means obviously the speed of the induction motor is also reduced so with the help of the external resistors or external rotor resistance adding of external rotor resistance we will control the speed of the induction motor another method the cascade control method of speed control of induction motor in this method of speed control the two three phase induction motors are connected to a common shaft two three phase induction motors are connected to a common shaft and hence called cascaded connection of the induction motors let us assume the different notations we will use in this uh, method ns1 be the synchronous speed of the main motor ns2 will be the synchronous speed of the auxiliary motor there are two motors we have the first motor is main motor and second motor will be the auxiliary motor and p1 be the number of poles of the main motor and p2 will be the number of poles of the auxiliary motor f is the frequency of supply f1 is the frequency of rotor induced emf of the main motor and n is the speed of the set and it remains same for both the main as well as the auxiliary motor are mounted on a common shaft that is s1 is the slip of the main motor that is equal to ns1 that is speed of the main motor that, that means speed, uh, rotating magnetic field speed of the main motor minus speed of the uh, induction motor by ns1 that is f1 equal to s1 times of the frequency of the supply so f1 is the frequency of the uh, induced emf in the rotor of the first main main motor and which is equal to slip s1 times of the frequency of the supply the similarly the auxiliary motor is supplied with the same frequency as the main motor that is f1 equal to f2 because both are connected to a common supply so ns2 equal to the speed of the uh, synchronous speed of the auxiliary motor equal to 120 f2 by p2 and it is equal to 120 f1 by p2 ns2 equal to where f1 equal to s1 times of the frequency substitute this value in this expression we will get ns2 equal to 120 f s1 by p2 now put the value of s1 equal to ns1 minus n by ns1 we will get the expression ns2 equal to 120 f into s1 will be replaced with ns1 minus n by ns1 that is equal to 120 f into ns1 minus n by p2 ns1 divided by p2 ns1 now at no load the speed of auxiliary rotor is almost same as its uh, synchronous speed so n equal to ns2 so n equal to 
n s two equal to n s two equal to n equal to the similar expression we have one twenty f by one twenty f into n s one minus n by p two into n s one. Now rearrange the above equation and find out the value of n. We will get n equal to one twenty f from the expression. We will derive the expression for speed n equal to one twenty f by p one minus p two. This cascaded set of two motors will run at a new speed, having number of poles p one plus p two. In the above method, the torque produced by the main as well as the auxiliary motor will act as a in the same direction, resulting in number of poles p one plus p two. Such type of cascading is called cumulative cascade. And if the one motor type is um, there is a one motor of cascading in which torque produced by the main motor. Is in opposite direction to that of the auxiliary motor. Such type of the cascading is called differential cascading, resulting in a speed corresponding to p1 minus p2 number of poles. In this method of speed control of three-phase induction motor, four different speeds can be obtained when main only main induction motor work, having a speed corresponding to the main induction motor is called 120 f by f by p1. When only auxiliary motor winding will work, this will be the speed of the induction motor N S two equal to one to D F by P two. When both are working in cumulatively cascaded, the speed of the set will be one to D F by P one plus P two. When both are working differentially cascading, so speed equal to one to D F by P one by P one minus P two. These are the four, four possible methods, four possible four uh, possibilities. These are the four different possibilities we have in a cascaded connection of the induction motors. So we will have four different speeds by the this kind of method. Another method is injecting slip frequency EMF in a rotor side. When the speed control of three-phase induction motor is done by adding resistance in a rotor circuit, some part of power called the slip power is lost as a I square R losses in the case of the Injecting and I mean uh, in in case of the adding an external resistance in the rotor circuit, therefore the efficiency of the three phase induction motor is reduced by this method of speed control. So the slip power loss can be recovered and supplied back to improve the efficiency of a three phase induction motor. And this scheme of recovering the power is called a slip power recovery scheme. And this is done by connecting an external source of EMF of slip frequency to the rotor circuit. So, with the help of the injecting a EMF, the injecting the injected EMF can be either oppose the rotor induced EMF or aids the rotor induced EMF. If oppose the rotor induced EMF, the total rotor resistance is increases and hence the speed is decreased. And if the injected EMF is is aids the main rotor EMF, the to total resistance will decreases and hence Speed will be increases. Therefore, by injecting an induced EMF with the help of the auxiliary source, that EMF will be of slip frequency in the rotor circuit can control the speed of the induction motor. The main advantage of this type of the speed control is this this uh, type of the speed control of three phase induction motor is that of wide range of speed control is possible whether it is above normal speed or below normal speed. In the previous case, that is the cascaded connection of Speed control of induction motor. There are only the four possibilities and four different uh, speeds will obtain by the cascaded connection. But in the case of the injecting the slip frequency EMF into the rotor side, we will have a finite speed control over the wide range of the speeds we will be getting from injecting the slip frequency of EMF into the rotor side. So simply by using the auxiliary source uh, EMF, which is connected to the rotor, or injecting the auxiliary. Injecting the slip frequency of EMF with the help of the auxiliary source, we will control the speed of the induction motor with the help of the direction of injected EMF. If the direction of injected uh, injected EMF will be in the same direction of your induced EMF in the rotor, that will be the addition. That the addition of the induced EMF that means that the total uh, resistance of the rotor will decreases. If it will be in opposite direction, it opposes the induced EMF in the rotor, the rotor resistance will Increases so by controlling the magnitude of injected EMF into the rotor circuit, we will control the speed of 
three phase induction motor so if you want to control the speed above its normal operating speed or below its normal operating speed also be possible by injecting the emf in a rotor circuit this is possible only in the case of slip ring induction motor and it is not possible in the case of squirrel gauge induction motor thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates